Hello everyone, welcome to the episode 28 of Lotus Lab. In this episode, we're going to be talking about initiators for the Agent Compendium. But if, in case you didn't watch the first episode about duelists, please go and watch it before going into this episode because there are some crucial informations that you might need in context to this new episode. If you didn't see, there's going to be as, as well a link to the Compendium in the description of this video. Uh, you can share this with your friends, uh, specifically the newer ones to, that are uh, that are trying out Valorant, uh, because I feel like there's a lot of uh, misconception between the roles and how people are playing their agents and understanding in general uh, how to play the game in, in overall. You know, it's like in Valorant, it's very important to understand that you choose your agent towards your playstyle and not the other way around. The agents are a supplement to your own playstyle, and it's very important to understand that because if you're a good lurker and you don't play an agent that is good like lurking, you have a disconnect, right? But today we're gonna talk, we're gonna be talking about the initiators, and I want to break down the differences in um in the roles and how to approach uh, a little bit of the of their playstyle on their own. So we're gonna start with sky and complexity, uh, as we have also start uh, did start with the dualist explanation. Um, there was a lot of comments yesterday when I shared the video. Why on earth Sky is so low on complexity? Like, she's actually, it, it's so tough to actually flash people and so on. Maybe it is. But the thing is, when you look at the grand scheme of things when it comes to Sky, the complexity comes, uh, well, essentially from pressing a button. Other agents require a lot more knowledge and, let's say, um, uh, uh, precision when it comes to using the utility. Sky, when you think about it, one of her skills is pressing a button, the heal. You don't have to do anything, right? It has an AoE, and if people are in an AoE, they get healed, right? Uh, remember, the heal goes through smokes as well. The flash doesn't require, essentially, any lineups uh, or, 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 like, ability to uh, make sure that you, you have a correct angle because you just press the button, and if it, it cannot be destroyed, it has a long range, and if it just... If the bird sees a player, it gets you info. Like, it doesn't really matter much how on earth are you using it, right? The dog is very simple to use, much simpler than the drone. Uh, and then we have the ultimate, which is essentially press a button and forget, right? So when you compare it to the complexity uh, of other uh, initiators, there's much less stuff to think about when using your utility than, for example, on a breach or, or a fade or sova, right? Then that uh, also KO, I reduce the complexity a little bit when it comes to the comparison to Fates of a Breach, because his ultimate is also kind of fire and forget, but it's still not as easy to use as Sky's ultimate, which is essentially given value, right? Um, so that's why the complexity of Sky is lower, why the complexity of those three is higher, because they require a little bit more planning and precision, specifically when it comes to Breach, you need ultra precision to not catch your teammates in the, let's say, friendly fire of the utility, right? While Fade and Sova, they have a lot of um, lineups knowledge that you kind of need, um, specifically also for Sova when it comes to his secondary role, but we're going to touch about that in a moment. Now, primary role. One could think like, well, it's an initiator, he should be initiating, right? Well, not exactly. There, there's still a little bit of difference in how those agents, even though they have the same class, uh, they have different primary roles. And that is very important to understand. So the agents that deliver the proactive info, so Sky, Fade, and Sova, their main role is scouting. You have utility that en enables you to get space in form of information, right? So you're able to use the dog, the prowlers, the drone um, to get info about a specific zone on the map. That's why scouting is the main role. But then we have a KO who is an initiator who doesn't have scouting ability, but he has a different role. Like the utility denial is one of his important um, aspects of the game, but zoning I feel like it's the most important one. Zoning for KO, um, when it comes to like the, the utility usage that you have, it's kind of like a phoenix combined with an initiator that gives you a little bit of info with the dagger, right? You're able to not only angle deny the, the, uh, deny other players um, with, with your flash, you're also able to zone people out with your molly, and essentially then you have a huge impact with your ultimate 
because it has such a huge range. So essentially, it's zoning a little bit your opponents as well, right? That's why KO has the secondary, like primary role in zoning as well. Same goes for Fade. Her, her, her uh, C's utility is such an important key piece to execute that zoning after scouting is her primary role because it, it has a huge synergy uh, with agents that deal damage, right? You have the ability to combo it with other players, and that's so important to understand. I would see many Fate players just use uh, their Cs with no combos. If you, have a, if you have a raise in your team, it's fantastic. Just use it together. It's so easy, right? You just tell your, you just tell your friend on raise or a random player, just use your pensions here. Brr. Throw it with me, right? And you can use that with any dealing damage ability. Not only fate, uh, raise pain shields that are just the easiest one, right? Sova is basically just scouting, right? That's that's his main role. That's essentially what his what what his job is. He has two utilities that are only made for scouting, essentially. So I put his primary role in that and breach flexible zoning. What do I mean by flexible zoning? Because we already have zoning, right? With neon phoenix rays. KO fade because of the ability to uh, negatively impact an area of the map for the opponents. Flexible zoning, I mean by that, that he's one of the characters that is actually able to zone out people with his either ultimate or uh, his uh, signature ability um, that I forgot the name right now, the stun, the basic stun, through walls. You don't have to be in a specific spot to be able to help with the zoning. You can be almost anywhere on the map, and on most maps, you're almost going to have the range of that stun everywhere available. That's why his fl his flexibility is so important, because specifically on defense as well, you're able to play in different positions and still be helpful to the entire team. Fracture is a best, best example where opponents are coming from four different angles, and you're almost able to help within a few seconds on all of those angles. Um, now, secondary role is pretty easy to understand. Angle denier is, I always gonna put angle denier if someone has flashes. That's like your secondary role. Like you need to use your flashes, right? If, think about it this way as well, this is more important on uh, on attack than defense because when you're attacking, your opponents will be holding angles. But if you have a flash and you're dying to someone who's just holding an angle, that means that your secondary role was used incorrectly. Now, why did I put secondary role for Sova um as a utility destructor right i also put a comment check out the, the the example here because that's the main reason why i'm always so upset in immortal 3 that i play i have literally never played with a sova and i always ask if they have a lineup for kitchen for the shock dots they never do so i created my own check it out if you wanted to to, to learn but his job his secondary job and it's very important is utility destruction Utility from Sentinels, like the traps in Kitchen on Icebox. If you play Ascent, Pizza Trap is such an important key piece of utility to make sure that the defenders have map control without sacrificing a player. Sova can sacrifice 150 credits to make sure that you have or you deny the map control for the defenders because the Sentinel that, on, that is on the other side of the map is not able to just control it with a piece of utility. And that's what, what he's so underutilized as a utility destructor. And I feel like it's, I, I was actually eager to put it in a primary role to put more attention towards, but that will be just disingenuous. His still main role is scouting, but utility destruction is so important on Sova and so underutilized that if you're a Sova player, you need to create or just get from someone else lineups for destroying the key um key areas of the map from the, from their sentinels utility that's your second role that is even almost as important as your primary role as a uh sova now tertiary role uh that's just you know to just it's very basic right like the agents that have the ability to get proactive info i just put it there because you're able to be um proactive with your abilities right to get informations like, it's very obvious for initiators, but it's more, it's less obvious for agents like your and race. That's why I think the tertiary role in proactive info is so important to note. But for initiators, it's just like a, you know, well, obviously, they're going to have that. Now, execute support is the same as Phoenix, right? You have a lot of utility that just helps to be, um, to be an attacker and execute the site, right? That's why Breach, KO have that because KO the Molly, um, 
uh, and Daga helps you get onto site, right? For Breach, well, obviously his entire kit is essentially a execute support, right? That's also, he, his role is just flexible zoning. Uh, attack order, remember my friends, attack order, I, I feel like I, I, I wasn't clear in my first dualist explanation and I should have been clear, that's on me, I'm sorry guys. What I mean by attack order is what is the order of the agents when it comes to attacking site? I'm not talking here about like um, uh, first zone before you go to the site, right? If you, for example, play on ascent and you attack uh, B site, I'm not talking about the garage. The garage is still not, there's no attack order there, right? You probably just will have a little bit different approach. But if you're going to go onto site, that's where the attack order is so important. So um, there's, there's a lot of action to talk about when it comes to attack order, when it comes to initiators, because many people think, oh, I'm an initiator, you know, I'm, I'm not going to enter first. Well, wrong. That's why Sky and Chaos have the flexible entry. Remember that players who have the flexible entry attack order, they can essentially be anywhere on the attack order. They can be first entry, they can be a second entry, they can be a support, depending on how you just approach the game. But it's always incorrect to assume that just because you play an initiator, you should never go first during the execute. Of course, it's preferable if you have Jet Neon Phoenix race, for them to be the first entry, right? Or the KO because of the ultimate to be the first entry. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But it in it, you have to remember the least the, sorry, the 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 um if you don't have utility left, then you're the best agent to do first entry on an execute. Right? If you have no utility, you're essentially just a a, a drone with a gun. So you have to use that. Right? And people who have utility but don't want to use it well in that specific spot probably will be more worth than you. Right? So um the flexible entry, Sky, even though she got nerfed with the entry flashes, that's still possible to do. The same goes for the KO of the right-click flashes. So if you play Sky Sky or KO, remember you're essentially like a mini duelist, right? That's that's your that's why you're at the flexible entry. Now, secondary entry is someone who is using just one piece of utility or two and just running in after the first player that goes as the first entry and your job is to trade. Secondary entry is, in my eyes, it's not as important as the first entry. Like if you play Jet, you need to dash and check the corners and be a bait, right? And it's not important for you to get kills because what you need to do is create the chaos in the space and no one expects you to frag in that position, right? That's why I always say, I don't... I don't really care if you play jet and you go 0-12 on attack, if you're dashing on site and you're trying your best. If you get kills, it's a bonus. But when it comes to the secondary entry, secondary entry, that's where the pressure comes to perform. Because your teammate does the entrance and now you're coming with him and your job is to trade him. So when you're secondary entry, there's actually a lot of focus on getting kills right, from you, when you're executing the site. So Fates of a Breach are able to be the secondary entry because you just use, use a utility and you run in, right? But sometimes you're going to be like a support, that's the slash comes here, because you're going to be using so much util, you're never going to be fast enough on site. That's why I typed in a, uh, slash the support, because Breach, for example, his entire kit can be used during one execute, right? stun flash flash aftershock or like you know whatever order you you you're there and you're going to be stuck in the area that is behind other players that are executing the site so you're going to be essentially never on site with them because if the attack is successful you don't have to be on site and your job will be now to hold the flank right so that's why the support is so important to understand as well that if if a breach is using his utility correctly and is helping the execute and the execute is successful, he never kind of has to be on site, right? And Sova, well, if you think about it, when Sova is stuck in the drone, right, and then is using his uh, lineup or, or the ultimate or something, well, then he's never going to be on the site as well. So that's why the, I, I type in Sova Breach, uh, the support possibility of, of, of the attack order. Flash types... Right now, after the change of Sky, um, there are support flashes in the first place, right? Because they cannot be destructible. Um, sorry, they cannot be destroyed anymore. And they have uh, less ability to be pop flashes. 
There are more like support flashes for other teammates, but at the same time, I didn't want to mention it, but they can still be used as, as pop flashes, right? It's not like you shouldn't be using them as pop flashes, but they are more designed in a way that you want to use them for your teammates. Flexible flashes is whatever you want to do with them, you're good with it, right? Left click for the long range for other players, right click for yourself, even though they got nerfed, that's still very good as a first entry uh, flashes and breach his... Unfortunately, I love playing Breach, and unfortunately, using the Flash for yourself is very slow. Against better players, like uh, uh, high-skilled players, you're going to have a really hard time uh, getting value out of the Flashes in a 1v1, because they're going to almost always just dodge it, right? So, because of the the, the slow pace of re-equipping your gun, uh, when you compare it to Phoenix, like it, it's like a no-brainer, right? Or even to KO, so it's more designed as well. For the support for the other agents now lurking why did i put every single initiator at zero out of ten on lurking one they don't really have a lot of utility that helps them dodge traps and so on but two it's more about the role like you're expected to be with your team obviously there are gonna be some um rounds where you're suddenly gonna become a lurker mid-round for the team just because of your position on the map right but in general if you're playing an initiator you shouldn't be aiming to be a lurker for your team because your utility is so important for the success rate of your attack that you shouldn't be lurking remember also lurking is on attack on defense you're flanking that's, a, that's let's let's keep using two different words because I, I I hear a lot of people using the word lurking when they are the defender and that is just not correct and very misleading. So let's keep it this way. Now, prefer prefer preferable defense role. If I didn't type in a, a a role for it, that means like it's whatever. You your the design of the agent doesn't support something. Uh, but I wanted to point out that Keo and Sova I think are the best at anchoring because of the possibility of the long range support. This is the secondary defense role. So this is kind of like connected. Uh, but I think it's important to like show both, right? So one. Sova is able to stop a push because of the uh, the informations that he can gather and the shock does like a let's let's not kid ourselves they're not gonna stop a push but they're helping a little bit with the anchoring um but uh ko is a great example because he has a powerful molly to stop a push and also at the same time just like sova he's able to help the other side of the map with one of his key pieces of utility with the dagger of the recon arrow you can or the shock darts you can long range support the other side of the map so you never have to move from your side. This is why I typed both of them as anchors, because their agent design helps them to be useful for the team, even when they are anchoring a site. All right, and what's the difference between Breach having the medium range support and the long range support for Sova and Ko? The medium range support, I tapped that in for Breach, because for example, when you play on Haven or on Lotus, uh, when you have three sites, typically you would benefit the most if you play in the middle, because then you're stunned, is a medium sub medium range support utility for both sides that you're not on because of the way that i said it's flexible zoning right he can go with the stun through the walls so even if he's not there to help you he can still be useful for the team that's why the medium range support uh, on him is so important and you want to keep that in your mind when it comes to uh, defensive sniping ability, I put 0 out of 10 on all of them. That doesn't mean you cannot use an operator as an initiator, right? This just means that the agent doesn't support in any way using an operator. There's not a single piece of utility that will be like, oh, well, this, this is kind of designed to help me with, with the weapon, right? That's why it is 0 out of 10. That's why agents like Chamber and uh, Yoru or, or Jet are higher on that because their kit helps you with using the sniper, right? Initiators, they don't have that. Now, attack or priority. This, the, the, I got a lot of hate yesterday uh, when I released this uh, spreadsheet. Why on earth is Sova 3 out of 10 men in pro play? So, it's so good. Rah, rah, rah. Remember, guys, the orb priority is in a vacuum, right? The, the orb priority means that the game just started, I would, I would like to just you to imagine this. The orb priority shows 
the importance of an ultimate on that agent in a vacuum. When I have five agents in a team and all of them are at zero orbs and we have one orb in front of us, I want to choose one agent that gets that first orb based on their priority because of how useful his ultimate is and how easy it is to get. That's why the cheapest ultimates have a little bit more priority if they're useful for attacking. Like, that's why Cypher and Reyna, even though at 6 orb, have 0 out of 10, but Phoenix is 10 out of 10, because it's an initiation tool that is very easy to get. And Sova, when you compare it to K of Fade and Breach, is not even close to the same amount of usefulness, right? Sova not only has an 8 orb, but has no guaranteed, no guaranteed effect of the, on the opposing team during an execute on a side. But when you compare it to, like, Fade, Breach, Chaos, all, all of them have a huge range of effect of their ultimate that has guaranteed value, right? If you use your Fade ultimate on site, you gather informations and you deal DK damage. You also deafen the opponent so you can push on site and have a very easy entry in For the Love of God. For the love of God, Fade players, I, I beg you, when you have your ultimate... We have to make another episode about that because it pisses me off. But when you have your ultimate, save your prowlers for the ultimate. Change the way you use the utility, right? Because you need the prowlers for your ultimate and you should never, ever in rank use the ultimate for rotations and fakes. It's a fucking waste. The ultimate is so powerful for executing on site. You never want to not use it, right? So... Um, KO Fade and Breach essentially always give you value when you do an execute on attack. That's why I'm putting the, uh, their, their ultimates on such a high priority because that, uh, that is an ultimate that I always want to use when I'm going onto a site with an actual execute. While Sova doesn't deliver you uh, guaranteed value and it's, 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 it's like, well, you, you can get a kill, but it's not that easy as well. You have to hit a player twice. There's some you know, usage when it comes to destroying utility with it and so on. But again, not as important when you have a KO fade and breach to actually help you get to the site and win the round, right? Sky is like in between because it doesn't give you a lot of value, but it is guaranteed value and it can be used for an execute onto site. That's why she's at 7 out of 10. But the three big ultimates are the most important ones, right? And on the orb defense priority, um... I would say that the importance of those ultimate goes down a little bit in the grand scheme of things, um, but they are still very important to stop potential pushes, right? Like all of the uh, Sky Fade uh, KO Breach ultimates are really good at defending a site or retaking, while again, Sova, no guaranteed value, and you're stuck. In, like if you ever played Sova on a site, and you're just on the side defending and execute, if you do your ultimate, there's, a, there's like 80% chance you're dead. Because you're, you're literally exposing yourself. You'd put like a GPS on the map. Where are you standing, right? And for three ultimate charges, you cannot shoot and you're exposed because you're being like kicked back as well. So not only have to get, have to get position on the map to use this safely, if there's a jet player or a race player, they will just most likely just dash on you and kill you, right? That's why I don't think there's a lot of priority on Sova Ultimate in general in the game when you have other initiators in the team. They're just better at that. So, um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you have any suggestions, if you have any um, comments about, like, you know, what I... What I explained in this in this uh, spreadsheet, feel free to drop them um, in the comment section. I also added a change log today uh, to the document, so you guys know if I'm changing anything in the document because I think that's very important. Uh, so that's, I'm just trying to keep this as professional as as possible. We're gonna add more entries to that to this and also new sheets with synergies and i don't know map usage whatever but there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming in um to this uh tomorrow we're gonna record another part with the uh, controllers but that's gonna be it for today thank you very much for watching and see you guys around